So actually it was from reading books. So I think I'd always been interested in science and physics from a very young age, but uh, probably like a lot of kids, it was black holes and things like that that, that you know, caught my attention first. But uh, then probably late in high school, sometime like that, I came across this book by Alistair Ray about the interpretations of quantum mechanics. And, and then like, I, that decided me that I had to do physics to understand you know, what is really going on with Schrodinger's cat and, and, and Bell's theorem and things like that. Um, so yeah, so that's actually why I decided to do physics at university. Uh, and then at university, I also had an interesting experience that in, uh, at the end of my second year of university, I did a vacation scholarship at a, another university. And, uh, and there, in, so that was after I'd done one introductory quantum mechanics course. Uh, and there, I came across this book in the library by Wheeler and Zurek, which is sometimes called the Big Red Book, uh, because it's just this book full of these classic phys quantum physics papers. I think it's called, oh, what was it called? Um, quantum theory and measurement, it's called. So, so I actually learned a lot of the quantum foundation straight from the original papers, like the papers by Bohm, by Everett, um, Bell, of course, and things like that. So I think that was probably an unusual uh, background for someone that, that, that I was exposed quite early in my knowledge of quantum mechanics to, um, to all of these, these different approaches and I think that really gave me an open mind that I probably wouldn't have got so much from the regular university education. So I actually have an open mind about what the ultimate quantum theory might turn out to be. I mean I really hope that you know that we'll make new discoveries or, or new ways of looking at theories so that ultimately we will all agree on what is the right interpretation? Um, but I, but I not, I wouldn't rule out or in any interpretation at this point. But, but, um, but if you ask me what interpretation fits most naturally with my, you know, philosophical inclinations, then, then I would say a sort of theory which has a, a straightforward ontology. That is, where you know, sort of what you see is more or less what you get. Um, so that's why Bohmian mechanics, for example, does appeal to me a lot. Um, but I have a, yeah, I have a pretty open mind. That is a very good question. Um, so I, 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 I think the problem of probability is, is one that even yeah, I mean, mathematicians and philosophers of science don't agree upon. Uh, so maybe it's too much to expect us to be able to answer that question in quantum physics. Um, probably, I knew, well, I think definitely unusual for someone who, who likes Bohmian mechanics. I'm actually also attracted to the idea of probability as, as, a, um, uh, the, as a gambling commitment. This is typically a, uh, yeah, this is sort of the, the Bayesian view of, of, of probability. That to me actually makes, makes sense and I would like to be able to understand and I think to some extent one can understand Bohmian mechanics, you know, from that perspective. Um, but that said, maybe, maybe this is totally wrong and maybe the, the, you know, quantum mechanics is actually telling us that we should understand probability completely differently. Um, and that, that, that quantum mechanics has a, you know, that, that ultimately all probability maybe arises from quantum mechanics. That's, that's another possibility. Um, regardless, I think that it is nevertheless, it's, I mean, even if we can understand probability in quantum physics in some way that's familiar already from classical mechanics or classical probability theory, I think it is undeniable that there is a different, that, that the randomness that appears in quantum physics is of a different sort from the randomness that we deal with in everyday life because the, the randomness comes from unknown classical parameters. Uh, there's always the possibility that by being working hard enough we could find out what those classical parameters are. Whereas in, in, in quantum mechanics, even if we believe that there are parameters out there which are determining things and that it's just not knowing those things, there are reasons that we can't ever find out those parameters. And so even if it is an ignorance, it's of an ignorance of a different sort.
that it, than what exists in classical mechanics because there are in principle reasons that we could not remove that ignorance. So on balance, I'd say that what, uh, what the question was, what, is, is quantum mechanics, is randomness different in quantum mechanics? I'd have to say yes, but I'm also not willing to commit to, you know, exactly nevertheless what is the nature of randomness in quantum mechanics. Uh, that's been a topic of much discussion at this conference. Um, so I think, I think in, in the layperson's terms, I'd say to be different, that um, what Bell's theorem means is that there can't be any local explanation for correlations which we observe in the world, or for certain correlations which we observe in the world. Um, so I think that that, unlike some people, I think that that leaves a genuine choice that you can either give up on locality, which is what most of the people here I think think is indicated by Bell, Bell's theorem, um, but I think that the, the genuine other possibility is to give up on the idea of explanation. Uh, and that's actually a, um, there's a fairly large community of people who are willing to pay that price for preserving locality in a very limited sense uh, by just giving up on the idea of being able to explain what's going on in the world. Um, so my personal philosophy again is that, I mean, I got into science because I wanted to understand the world and I want, you know, I, I want there for things to have explanations because otherwise why would I be studying it? I'm not studying science in order to, uh, you know, make better widgets, although that's where the money comes from. Um, I'm studying it because I want to want to understand it. So of course, I I think that I mean my natural inclination again is that what Bell's theorem indicates is that there is genuine non-locality in the world. But I don't want to be dogmatic, and I'll admit that you know that people who are satisfied with the idea that things happen and that's it, they're not necessarily explanations for things happening. But that's a valid perspective that you can take on Bell's theorem and what it means. Hmm. Um, so maybe I could say two things about, about that. I mean, I think the role of philosophers in physics is to take the time to express things clearly and think deeply and about, you know, exactly how to express things, something that, that practicing physicists don't usually have the time to do. Um, so I think that's definitely a useful, uh, a useful function. Maybe if I could twist the question a little and also just, just talk about what is the role of thinking about funda foundations of quantum mechanics in physics. Because um, certainly there'd be some people who might question, you know, whether this is a useful thing to be doing. I think it's actually, um, it is a useful thing for physicists in general to think of, to, yeah, to, to, for this, f these fields to exist because it opens new ways of thinking about problems and thinking about the world. And I think that actually, um, being familiar with very different ways of interpreting quantum mechanics really opens your mind to, to different ways of approaching problems, for example. And, and um, so, so even if someone, for example, didn't take uh, Bohmian theory at all seriously, nevertheless knowing that it exists is a very important thing because it means you, you it prevents you from well, ideally would prevent, prevent you from saying stupid things about, you know, that quantum mechanics necessarily means that the world is random or something like that. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I think that the, it's, um, that, I mean, apart from ultimately what, you, what we would like, as I said before, is that, you know, we, we will make progress towards, you know, some theory that's going to gain general acceptance. But in the meantime, I think it's important to have all these avenues pursued, not least just because it, it keeps uh, people with an open mind and, and are able to think about problems in different ways. I guess maybe I'll use this just as an opportunity to, to push a particular point of view, which is I think that um, my gut feeling is that the, and this is probably because I have a quantum information background as well as, as quantum foundations background, um, that, that the wave function 
doesn't seem like it should be an element of reality. Um, so I personally, I would be attracted to any theories which manage to to give an account of, of the quantum world or some approximation to it that's compatible with what we've observed, um, while dispensing with the wave function. So I think, I mean, yeah, so I think that would be a fruitful, to me, that's my gut feeling is that fruitful lines of research would be ones that manage to account for the quantum world without using the wave function. Be, just because it seems like a very odd sort of Thing to believe to be real. 